Praise the Lord. I want to talk about discovering purpose, God's plan, deliverance, and your destiny. A lot of times people confuse purpose and destiny. And they are not the same, even though they are related, correlated, or interrelated. See, your deliverance, your breakthrough, starts with knowledge. Your mental picture is your actual future. Your heart condition will determine where you will go, where you end up in life, your destination or your destiny. Now, a lot of people confuse plan and purpose as well. Purpose is the reason for your being. Purpose is the overarching reason why you are here on planet Earth in this time, at this epoch in history, why you are born in a particular family, raised in a particular place, and then achieve or tend to achieve or aspire to a particular position or direction or discretion or to become something in life. See, God created everything for a purpose. In other words, to give him glory for his pleasure. So, so the dominant purpose of God is for us to realize what he created us to be in the first place. All in an attempt to give him the credit, to give him the pleasure, to give him satisfaction, to give him pleasure. Whether you're a child of God or you are not yet one, God created everything in life to give him pleasure, ecstasy, fulfillment as part of making him happy for his pleasure. Now, the purpose of God never changes. That's why the Lord, through the scripture, says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. But the plan of God to achieve that purpose can change. I'll give you an example. God planned for Moses to become the leader of the children of Israel. But do you know that the original plan was to take them to the promised land after delivering them from the shackles of slavery and bondage of Egypt. But because Moses made mistake, he never made it to Canaan. The plans changed. It was actually Joshua that took the train of Israel to the promised land and shared the land flowing with milk and honey with them. The same way, God's original plan can change. But his overarching purpose, his original intention, his original will, his original uh, uh, blueprint and final decision concerning that life or situation do not change. God has that said. But the plan to achieve that purpose may change, may alter, which is actually the path or pathway or directions or ways or means or apparatus or setup or the processes or phases that God wants to use to achieve that particular purpose may change. Whereas destiny is actually a particular direction or destination God wants you to get to. See, there may be many, many destinies in a life. But there is always one purpose. Destiny is like achieving a dream you set up for yourself. A goal. That's why you have to have a vision to achieve that destiny in order to get to that end point or that aim or to that objective 
that you intend to program or you are programming for yourself. Things you want to do, things you want to become, things you want to have, things you want to achieve as God will have it. That's why I always say that deliverance without destination or direction is deception. It's not enough to receive deliverance, which is liberation. You have to achieve the purpose to which you've been delivered, or more importantly, your destiny. So deliverance without direction is deception. Because after deliverance, what are you going to do with your life? Because the enemy fights purpose and then try to truncate your destiny. But after the hindrance is gone, after the opposition is gone, after the demon or their blockade or their diversion or confusion or their barrier barricade or resistance or delay or deny or diversion or confusion, after he's gone, what are you waiting for? What do you want to do with your life after you come out of prison, after you come out of jail or bondage or yoke or shackle or chains? In fact, the enemy fights destiny in order to keep people bound, blind, chained, emasculated, restrained, restricted, so that they can be in one spot and time will be going without achieving God's original purpose or intention for that life. And we don't have all the time in the world. God brought us here for a purpose and for a reason and for a season. We have time frame to fulfill that destiny so that we can walk in God's overarching purpose to make him happy, to make him pleasurable. That's why God said he created all things and for his pleasure they are and we are created. So if you understand God and the ways and means of God and the plans and purpose of God, you will understand that the first thing the enemy fight more than anything is your purpose and destiny. You see, the discovery of a major definite purpose is the key to all achievement, including financial blessings, things that comes to you, things you attract, things you achieve, things you program for your life, things that comes to you, things that you are connected to in interaction or transaction or relationship in order to excel because everything God makes is to achieve purpose. So you don't discover uh, your, your, your purpose. How do I say it? Uh, you rather discover your purpose, I mean to say, but you don't decide or determine your purpose. God already has a plan to achieve a purpose so what you have to do is to discover that purpose so that you can recover as you uncover in order to fulfill destiny, which is why you are going in the first place. The Bible says Jesus, knowing that he came from God and that he goes back to God and that God has put all things into his hand. Well, he came from God has to do with origin, has to do with things, source or originality because the father is the source, the father is the origin, the father is the progenitor, the father is where he sprang forth from. And the Bible says he knows or knowing. That means you're discovering your destiny is a progressive revelation. It's not a one-time hit wonder. It's actually present continuous tense because the Bible says Jesus knowing, not a one-time hit wonder. He didn't just know. It was a continuous process that he came from God and that he is going back to God and that the Father has put all things into his hands. So your integrity your originality is tied to your origin, which is your heavenly father. 
then your destiny or destination where he is going because that time he has achieved what he wanted to do on earth and he's going back to the father which is his destination but in the middle the bible talks about that the father has put all things into his hands that is authority that's power that's anointing that's dominion what you are will determine what you have. And what you have will determine what you do than to acquire what you achieve. You see, we have the being. Then you have the doing. And then you have the having. People are always focused on having opposition. But they don't go back to the origin. Who is this guy? The being. Who are you in God? Whose do you belong where are you coming from? What's your origin? What is it in you? Which will determine what you can do. And what you can do now will determine what you can achieve to receive. What, which is your possession. See, people go for possession or material stuff or the manifestation of things. But they don't understand the whose or whom they are or whose they belong or where they spring forth which would determine what they do because we are not human doing we are human beings actually spiritual beings trying to have a human experience then the doing will determine the having or the possession so if Jesus knows because he's our parent son he's our illustration He's our example. He's our gold standard. We conform to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not called to a conformable life, a comfortable life. We are called to a conformable life, to conform to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why information is the difference between failure and success in life. Because information is transformation. The key to your deliverance is knowledge, superior knowledge, experiential knowledge. The truth that sets you free is the truth you know to do. And when you release yourself and walk into freedom, you fly because you know your why. You know who you are. You know whose you belong. You know where you are coming from. You know whom you are. Then you know what you can do. So, if you don't understand purpose, you will not understand the plans God has for you to achieve that purpose in order to fulfill a particular destiny that God catered for you. So, it starts with your mental picture, which is your actual future. And your mental picture will give us your vision. It is then the vision that will create the provision under God's supervision. In fact, wealth, the God kind of wealth, the kingdom kind of wealth or blessing is God's giving prosperity to achieve God's giving vision under God's supervision. So, if you don't have a dream to achieve purpose, if you don't have vision, there won't be provision. No dream, no future. Your mental picture is your actual future. So, the plan of God for your life is to work in his purpose. Is to work in his overall direction and discretion and pleasure. So, everything God makes is to achieve a particular purpose in his arsenal of wisdom. Because God has predetermined you, prepackaged you, pre-programmed you for success. He has already prepackaged you for victory, for breakthrough, for miracle of turnaround, to achieve what he ordained for you to do even before the foundation of the earth. But most of us go through suffering or adversity or problems or trials and tribulations before we discover purpose. See, 
everything you went through, some people don't discover their real purpose until their 40s or 50s. That time they wasted their life doing trial and error, doing hit and miss, trying this profession, trying that vocation, trying that business, trying this, trying that. Did you notice it is said that in America that people actually do three professions before they settle to their real purpose in a lifetime. In other words, they try this. They try that. In fact, most people are not even working with the degree they spend time to acquire in the university. They are not working in their original calling or what they did in school. That means most people are mistaken. That means they have not discovered the original purpose or intention of God. And remember, there's a difference between your profession or what you read in school and your calling. Sometimes they may be the same, the same but for the most part, they are different. I'll give you an example. God endowed me and called me to be an apostolic teacher and prophetic deliverer. But do you know that's not what I read in school? So your calling may be different from your profession or your vocation. So you have to discover what God has called you to do if you want to be happy on earth. Remember the book, The Happiest People on Earth. The book says that if you discover what God has called you to do and you do it, you'll be the happiest person on earth. You won't be a square peg in a round hole. You will enjoy the journey. You will enjoy the work. Work and fun will go together. Why? Because work becomes fun. The question is, what will you do with your life when money is not an issue? What will you do with your life if you know that you will not fail? What will you do with your life if you know that fun and work go together? That's your forte. That's your calling. That's your profession. That's your niche because your riches and your niches. So a lot of times people come for deliverance. But they don't know that we don't just talk about liberation. We also talk about restoration. Restore, restoring your dignity, restoring your origin and integrity, restoring your self-esteem and self-value and self-image, restoring God's original purpose, restoring you to, back to God's plan and pathway and God's original blueprint for your life. Because God has a design for every life. God has a plan to achieve that purpose in our lives. So you discover to uncover, to recover, that your destiny is why we are here, the reason why we are here. And under the overarching purpose of God, you have your destiny, you have your dream, you have your direction, you have your gifts and talents, you have your uh, skills, you have your expertise, you have your training, you have your mental picture. They are all under the overarching purpose of God for you to achieve destiny under God's purpose or original purpose. So a lot of times people confuse purpose and destiny as well as plans. If I may summarize, the purpose of God never changes. If God called you to be a minister, you can run away from that call, you can do something else, you can give excuses, nothing you do will work. See, there is secular calling. There is sacred calling. So if God called you to do his work, he takes it seriously. And you think that secular calling is better, you will suffer and struggle. But if you understand purpose of God, you answer the call. Sometimes it's only about 5% of the population. Everything falls in place when you are under purpose. 
including your finances, your breakthrough, your blessings, your miracle of turnaround, your victory. In fact, if you are walking in purpose, little step or little walk will produce giant result and grace becomes available. Unction to function becomes available. Virtue is released. Help comes. Support comes. Divine intervention. Divine uh, 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 support or backup. Or the backup power of the Lord will support you because you are in the right purpose. You are in the right path to destination or destiny. A lot of times and a lot of people have not discovered their purpose. They are doing trial and error. They are doing hit and miss. They are doing guesswork. They try this profession. They try that profession. They listen to their friends. They listen to the media. They never listen to the Holy Spirit. They never check with God to know exactly what God made them, why God brought them here, why God created them, why God brought them in such a particular family or such a country or made them, you know, be where they are at the particular point in time. So, because people are doing hit and miss, they don't even know that God already had a purpose, that God never changes that. But the plan, which are step-by-step -step ways to achieve that purpose, can change. You can make mistake now. It doesn't change God's purpose, but it can change the plan to achieve that purpose. And God is a master planner. And God will take your setbacks and make it a step up for your setup, for your step up. See, God will use the stumbling block that the enemy planned and make it a stepping stone for his own plan to bring you on top. But you see what the enemy does is that he takes you up and tear you down. But God brings you down in order to rebuild you, in order to show you his way and his will, in order for you not to go by your own plan or your own idea or your own understanding or lean on your own education or information. God wants you to get your design from him. Get your blueprint from him. Get your direction and discretion from him. Stay with his word. Albert Einstein said it better. He said, tell me the mind of God. All other things are details. So don't check with your parents. Don't check with your friends. Don't check with media. Go with the Holy Spirit to show you what he wants you to be. Why God brought you here. It could be a secular profession. It could be a spiritual vocation like most of us are uh, uh, a ministry. Do you know we are only 5% or less? 95% of people are not called into ministry. And when God calls you into ministry, he will take care of you. You don't need to beg for money. You don't need to cajole. God knows how to bless you because he is your employer. That's why if you don't employ or rather deploy yourself, somebody will employ you. So, but you have to understand we are God. That's why God takes us through process. Adversity is God's university. All is worth it because God wants you to discover purpose. God wants you to discover who you really are. When you ask people, who are you? They tell you their names. They tell you where they are coming from. They tell you their fathers, whatever, their address. But that's not who you are. The real person is that you're a spirit who is from God. You have a soul. And you live in this earth suit called a body. So it's always better to check with God, to ask God. I didn't even say Google it. I didn't even say search or research. I didn't even say confide with flesh and blood because when God calls you to a particular profession, he doesn't even confide in your parents or any man or any flesh and blood. That's why we should take our identity, our definition, our direction and discretion, our purpose from our maker because your maker is your mirror. 
Your maker is your image. Remember, God said he created us in his image according to his likeness. So, if you, don't, if you are not yourself lately, that means you've deviated from God's original plan and blueprint concerning your life. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. God has a people for you. God has a passion for you. God has a power for you. God has a principle to adhere, to achieve that purpose. God is entire. God is complete. God is perfect. God doesn't make mistakes. God is not into try and error or confusion. God knows what he has called you to be. All you need to do is to discover it, to recover it, so that you can uncover and achieve purpose, so that you can walk in destiny and fulfill God's plan, so that you can inherit your covenant rights and privileges in Christ and your covenant blessings. Dr. Zo, bye-bye.